The next item of business is Members' Business Debate on Motion 10268 in the name of Jamie Halcrow Johnson on Scottish Apprenticeship Week 2018. And the debate will be concluded without any questions being put. May I ask those who wish to participate to press the request to speak button? And I call Jamie Halcrow Johnson to open the debate up to seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Firstly, I'd like to thank the businesses, employers and everyone else who contributed to this year's Scottish Apprenticeship Week. Special mention must, of course, go to Skills Development Scotland, who helped with much of the organisation uh, of uh, our visits that many of the members uh, here today will have enjoyed. And I'm sure we'll hear more about those experiences later. I understand from SDS that 99 visits to businesses and training providers took place as a result of Apprenticeship Week, including 92 MSPs from across all parties in this chamber. Over 120 uh, organised events took place with a further, further range of employers, training providers and partner organisations taking the opportunity to celebrate the achievements of their apprentices. This year's theme, Apprenticeships of the Business, is designed to convey the value of apprentices to employers across the country. My own visit was to Leonardo uh, Airborne and Space Systems here in Edinburgh and I was heartened to see the business's commitment to investing in building skills and providing training. I'd like to thank Alan Cahoon and his colleagues at Leonardo for what was a fas uh, fascinating and encouraging visit, and as well as the work the apprentices were doing on cutting-edge technology uh, as part of their normal role, it was great to also see some of the work they're doing uh, in their spare time to help adapt sensor technology to help students at the Royal Blind School. I commend them on that, and I wish them every success uh, with it in the future. There's also been welcome political focus on apprenticeships and work-based learning in recent years. This stretches to a rare cross-party consensus that more and better apprenticeships offer a valuable way of providing skills and training. We now have a great deal of experience of modern apprenticeships with 26,262 starts in the last year. However, this is also a turning point for the new forms of apprenticeship that are coming out into the pipeline. In 2016, the first foundation apprentices made a start on their learning. There have now been 1,591 participants as the scheme has rolled out nationally. The number of frameworks has increased from 8 to 10. However, in many local authorities, there is still limited provision. In some parts of the country, as few as two frameworks are offered, and in areas like the Highlands and Islands, there is little room for participants to travel. So I'm very pleased by the reply that Jamie Hepburn provided to me on the 27th of September that the Scottish Government is committed to increasing the choice for young people in Scotland's remote and rural communities, and I'll be looking forward to further news on future rollout. During Apprenticeship Week, my colleague Ruth Davidson called for the expand, ex, expansion of foundation apprenticeships to every secondary school in Scotland. That is a solid ambition, and one which begins to address the need to get Scotland's businesses better engaged with the education process and the skills pli pipeline they're so reliant on at an earlier stage. However, we also know from SDS meeting minutes in December that their expectation was only 2,600 of the contracted number of 3,200 starts could be delivered in 2018-2019 due to budget pressures. So I caution the Minister that this fledgling programme must be properly funded and reducing growth in the next year will deny hundreds of pupils the opportunity of, releasing benefit, of realising the benefits. Of course. Jamie Hepburn. Uh, I would caution Mr Halker Johnson to it misunderstand what was reported in the press in relation to that matter. SDS and the Scottish Government were very clear. The target was always for 2,600 foundation apprenticeship starts this year. Of course, they have to put out contracts for more than that so they can hit the target. Jamie Halcrow Johnson. I thank the Minister for the intervention and I'm encouraged if, if he believes that they are meeting the targets on that. At the same time, we are also seeing the introduction of graduate apprenticeships. The University of the Highlands and Islands led the initial pilot in 2015. There are now 12 institutions delivering the range of frameworks, largely focused on STEM subjects, with a target of 4,000 starts by 2020. We can look forward to SDS's annual report next month, and we'll be better based uh, to assess progress in this area. One important part of Apprenticeship Week is addressing the parity of esteem between work-based and academic learning. This is vital and must be accompanied by work across the departments of the Scottish Government to become a reality. Parity must be embedded in careers guidance across every school in Scotland, from an early age, young people must be aware of the opportunities apprenticeships offer. There are certainly positives, innovations like my, my World of Work website, but they must be publicised and embraced by the education sector to function efficiently. We, we recently debated the developing the young workforce strategy. While progress has been made since the Wood Report in 2014, we need to see real revolutionary change in how employees engage with education and skills sector if we are to address the needs of our rapidly changing labour market in the future. 
Apprenticeships, of course, stretch beyond the young workforce. 74% of MA starts are under the age of 25, commonly entering the workforce for the first time. There are, however, a range of people in other age brackets that would benefit from effective reskilling, and the apprenticeship program is one way of supporting that. Apprenticeships must also be accessible. Some years ago, there were a number of disappointing figures in relation to women and people with disabilities entering apprenticeships. These figures have improved, but there are still considerable gender distinctions in various apprenticeship frameworks. In my region, the Highlands and Islands, apprenticeships can be a key factor in creating a skills base that reflects local needs, as well as giving young people the opportunity to stay in these communities and learn after leaving school. Circumstances are very different in my region from the central belt. Typically, enterprises are smaller, and more work needs to be done to get SMEs on board and engage with providing apprentices. I raised this uh, issue with the First Minister earlier this month following a report by FSB Scotland. And the First Minister accepted that these smaller companies do face barriers and the need to increase the diversity of apprenticeship providers. So it would be perhaps be useful if the Minister could expand on the Scottish Government's plans in this area. The UK apprenticeship levy has also been a welcome move in ensuring that business contributes to the training and skills of their, work, their workforce. As we know, the Scottish Government has taken a different approach to the UK Government's plans for how the levy is spent in England. Again, we're at an early, st uh, early stage, but the experience of business in accessing funding and being able to utilize it useful, uh, usefully, particularly in relation to the Flexible Workforce Development Fund, will be absolutely key going forward. There remain questions over whether the fund should be broadened out to include providers other than colleges, as well as how eff effectively the college sector is building on these all-important employer links. Deputy Presiding Officer, this debate is an opportunity to highlight the important work of work -based, uh, role of work-based learning and to celebrate the achievement of apprentices across Scotland. In addition to our visits, SDS is also calling on members to be an apprentice for a day, getting a taste of some of the hands-on work that they undertake. So I'd call on colleagues from across this chamber to sign up to this and help emphasize the role of apprentices and apprenticeships in their own community, wherever they are in Scotland. I look forward to hearing today's contributions and again offer my thanks and congratulations to everyone involved in making Apprenticeships Week such a success. Now I have a lot of members who wish to speak so I really must ask everyone to adhere strictly to the four minute time limit and it would be appreciated if folk could say all they had to say in fewer minutes. And I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Alexander Burnett. Presiding officer, I thank Jamie Halcrow Johnston for bringing this important topic to our chamber for debate. As part of Scottish Apprenticeship Week, the motion encouraged members to get involved by visiting an apprenticeship employer or training provider in their area. Like many colleagues, I'm pleased to say that I took part in that week and visited the Irvine Paper Mill, where I met a very interesting and bright group of modern apprentices. They were all at different phases of their apprenticeship, but they had one thing in common. They'd not been told about the possibility of apprenticeships in their school. And this raised the question of whether apprenticeships are as widely promoted in schools as they should be and what more we can all do to ensure our young people are aware of all paths available to them. The young folk that I met are all enjoying really high quality learning and work experience in their engineering apprenticeships and will have a good job in our local community by following that path. I think one key element of raising the profile of this opportunity is that we really need to stress the parity of esteem between vocational or work-based learning and, and academic paths. An obvious way to do that is by making sure that information about apprenticeships is more widely and positively promoted in schools. I recently raised this issue at Education Committee with the Minister for Employability and Skills, who acknowledged that though the situation, situation is improving, it can still be a bit patchy. I understand that developing the young workforce is contributing to making sure that more young people are aware of apprenticeships as a post-school option, and I'd be encouraged to see that further rolled out as the Minister suggested. I also agree with the Minister that careers information and guidance offered by Skills Development Scotland could be broadened out and offered to young people earlier so that they're aware of apprenticeships from an early stage in their school life, whether that's foundation, modern or graduate apprenticeships. Chair of the National Parent Forum, Joanna Murphy, has pointed out that promoting apprenticeship in S5 and S6 is too late and that all options should instead be outlined to pupils in a broad sense in S2 so that they can make the right decisions for them at that point based on all the options available. She also stressed that, and I quote her now, parents certainly don't hear enough about the different options available to their children 
and are often hesitant to support unknown routes and can inadvertently negatively influence their children. I'm glad that the Minister is open to doing more to ensure earlier and more diverse careers information and guidance and look forward to monitoring progress on this as we work to raise young people's awareness of all the opportunities that are available to them, including quality apprenticeships. Um, I also am happy to say that I will be taking on the challenge and being an apprentice for the day. I'm not sure where I'll be going in my Cunningham South constituency, but I'm hoping it's something that doesn't involve wearing a hairnet or a something unflattering, but you never know. I'm sure it'll be great fun anyway. Presiding officer. I call Alexander Burnett, followed by Tom Arthur. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also note my congratulations to my colleague, Jamie Halker-Johnson, for achieving cross-party support and bringing this debate to the Chamber. Uh, indeed, it is a topic which is close to my heart, as I am an employer who is keen to see apprenticeship programmes flourish and nurture new talent. And as such, I refer members to my register of interest, in particular to my businesses I own, in which I currently employ six apprentices who benefit from CITB funding, and I aim to take on a further six later this year. Indeed, to date, we've taken on over 150 apprentices. And there's a reason that employers like myself are so keen on apprenticeship programmes. They're a productive and effective way for any business to grow their own talent. And they also allow businesses to nurture the motivated, skilled and qualified workforce that they require in their company. Now, productivity is a term we often refer to in this chamber for our economy. But we also measure productivity at a micro level within businesses. And apprenticeships help boost their productivity as they reduce staff turnover and recruitment costs. And there's an added bonus of employees feeling more valued, boosting staff morale, loyalty, commitment, and retention. And these are positive attributes to the company, then lead to a confidence from shareholders, potential employees, and clients. And with CITB Scotland finding that 80% of employers found their workplace became more productive, Apprentices are challenging the status quo of a business and encouraging innovative new ways of working. And it can be noted that the number of apprentices receiving support from CITB Scotland is now up 36% since 2011. And CITB are now the single largest training provider of modern apprenticeships across all frameworks in Scotland. And so businesses are clearly catching on to these benefits. And many of us in the chamber will be keen to ensure that apprentices are not there just to benefit better businesses, however. And I'm pleased that the format of apprenticeships is there to ensure that the largest benefactor are the individuals themselves. Generally, all apprentices are registered with one of the trade bodies, ensuring that they are employed and paid appropriately. And in addition, they study at college and gain experience on site over a four-year period. There are slight variations in length, with some being two-year adult apprentices, but by and large, the college curriculum is mirrored across colleges in Scotland to ensure that all apprentices are getting the same off-site training. Now, construction is not just about bricklaying. There are a lot of advances in technology and a growing demand for technical roles within the industry. And we need joiners, plasterers, managers, surveyors, civil engineers, and more. And with more than half of those in the construction industry reaching retirement age, I would encourage those seeking jobs or thinking about potential careers at school to consider one in construction. And there's a real opportunity here for the next generation to take advantage of an ever-growing industry. But if there's one ask today, it's to tradesmen themselves, to remember when they were starting their training and to encourage them to be keen to participate in taking on apprentices as someone once did for them. And this would help improve on-site training. And if enough tradesmen take part, it even allows apprentices to rotate around mentors uh, which will benefit them. So I'm very proud to be an employer with apprentices and I'll continue to champion the benefits they can bring to businesses across Scotland. Thank you. Call Tom Arthur to be followed by Ian Gray. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by thanking Jamie Halcrow Johnson for securing this debate and I'm delighted that we're having this opportunity to recognise modern apprenticeships. I'm very proud that um, the Scottish Government has delivered over 200,000 modern apprenticeships since coming into power in 2007 and I absolutely commend the commitment to raising that to 30,000 per annum by the end of this decade. Um, I was uh, one of the 99 um, MSPs who had the fantastic opportunity to go and visit um, apprentice apprentices in my constituency of Renfrewshire South. I went to the McGill's depot. Um, in Johnston. Uh, we also have a depot in Barnhead as well and they uh, had apprenticeships from right across my constituency and beyond. 
I think it's important to remember we often uh, of late have been debating buses um, within this parliament for many reasons, but they are also fantastic employers and the girls have been given really brilliant opportunities to young people. And I met a range of apprentices um, covering a, a range of trades, um, coach builders, mechanics and electricians. And it was clear to me how much they valued the opportunity, how much they how much pleasure they took from it as well, the camaraderie, the friendships. Um, but also there were some points raised which echo some of the points that Ruth McGuire highlighted in her remarks, which um, relate to perhaps more work to be done increasing awareness. I would commend Skills Development Scotland and the work they do to raise awareness, um, but I think there's always, always more that we can do. Um, certainly I think as well it's very important that parents know, I think if there's um, lack of awareness and understanding of what a uh, modern apprenticeship entails, then perhaps parents as key influencers um, may not have had the confidence to give that backing and recommendation to the young person. Uh, I think a key issue that has been raised um, in this debate is parity of esteem. And I absolutely agree we have to have parity of esteem between vocational and academic learning. Um, my father and two of his brothers were apprentices. Now this was a, a different era of apprentices when you could walk into a yard on a Friday and get a job on the Monday in the late 60s. But they were both born on a single line in Borheed in the late 40s and early 50s, leaving school with no qualifications. My father as an apprentice electrician was then able to go on, work abroad, work in the health service, do his city and guilds, progress into becoming an electrical engineer, become a manager and develop continually and retire as an estates manager in the health service. My uncle started off as a mechanic, worked and became, worked, got a job with Scania, worked as a trades part, set up his own business, and had a, which had a seven-figure turnover. And what this speaks to me about is the nature of on-the-job learning and the capacity to adapt. One of the challenges that we're also going to face is the ever-increasing pace of change within the workplace environment. The jobs of 10 years may, may well be obsolescent in 20 years. So capacity for continuously reinventing oneself, retraining, reskilling, and not beginning into a, sort of a, an ossified role is going to be absolutely vital. And one of the points that Alexander Burnett put um, very eloquently was the benefit to employers in that regard, and particularly on the issue of productivity. And there was a thought that struck me when Mr. Burnett was making his remarks, is that we know that one of the challenges we have in productivity is for, um, for many businesses, where we are very good at innovating, there's challenges in businesses uptaking those innovations. Now, for people who are apprentices and have on-the-job learning hardwired into them, I think they are going to be far more skilled at seeing opportunities to uptake these innovations and to apply them. So apprenticeships are great for apprentices themselves, but they're also fantastic for the employers and great for the Scottish economy overall. Thank you, President Officer. <laughs> I call Ian Gray to be followed by Emma Harper. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, uh, I'll add my thanks to Mr Halcrow Johnson for bringing the debate on Scottish Apprenticeship Week to the Chamber today. It is a week that um, I do always try to mark. Um, in previous years, I've uh, visited, for example, Tornish Nuclear Power Station and met some of EDF's uh, uh, marvellous young apprentices there. Uh, so for something different this year, uh, I visited uh, Yester Farm near Gifford, a family-run dairy farm, uh, well known locally and increasingly nationally for their milk and cheese. And there uh, I met Carol Wakefield, uh, who has since successfully completed her modern apprenticeship in dairy skills. Uh, when I met uh, Carol and the team, uh, they were actually battling to cope with the disruption caused by snow and the red weather warning. Uh, and despite this severity, they managed to keep the local shops and, to be honest, my fridge too stocked with milk when the supermarket's uh, shelves were empty. So I wish Yester and Carol uh, the very best for the future. Uh, we've heard from many speakers how modern apprenticeships open up fantastic opportunities for training and qualifications, and they are indeed a vital part of our education system uh, and the developing the young workforce strategy. The current modern apprenticeship program in many ways really dates back to uh, the budget dispute of 2009. At, at that time, uh, modern apprentices, apprenticeships were really in decline and had fallen uh, from around 17,000 starts uh, to about 10,500 over a, a short two-year 
uh, period. Um, and uh, as a result of the, the negotiations with the then government uh, in order to get their budget through at the second, uh, uh, second chance, uh, the number of apprenticeship places uh, were uh, increased again, that, that trend downwards uh, was reversed. And since then, uh, we have made real progress on expanding modern apprenticeships, and that's very, very uh, welcome. And the government is now making its progress towards the target of 30,000 MAs by uh, 2021. But we do need to uh, be careful to, to look at the detail of that, because the truth is that there was a significant increase in modern apprenticeships in 2009-10, not as a result of more opportunities being made available, but as a result of the recategorization, the transformation of level two training programs into the modern apprenticeship level two frameworks. Indeed, just recently, the minister wrote to me to confirm that of apprenticeship starts in 2016-17, 17,263 of them uh, were level three, and the target for next year for level three uh, is 20,000. But the truth is uh, that uh, Audit Scotland's um, last report into the apprentice apprenticeship programme would show that, in fact, well over 20,000 level three apprenticeships were being created every year between 2003 uh, and 2006. So comparing like with like, shows that the modern apprenticeship program at level three and above is actually still below the peak it was at 15 years ago. So, sure. Jamie Hepburn. I understand the point he's making though, but he would still accept though that in many circumstances, a level two apprenticeship is appropriate and is still a valuable experience for a young person going through it. Absolutely do. And I absolutely do accept that. And indeed, Carol's apprenticeship, which I spoke about earlier, was a level two apprenticeship in dairy skills. My point is simply this, that we shouldn't get too carried away with the progress we've made uh, in terms of numbers. And there are other problems too, which folk have referred to around gender balance, uh, for example. We all agree uh, that expanding the modern apprenticeship programme is important. We need to consider not just numbers in the programme, but the quality and balance of the programme as well, because it is a critical element of building our economy and creating opportunity for the next generations of young people. Call Emma Harper, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to add my congratulations to Jamie Halker Johnson for securing this debate. I fully support the aim of highlighting the importance and value of apprenticeships to individuals, businesses and the economy. As the, motion, as the motion encourages, I mark Scottish Apprenticeship Week by visiting BSW Timber in Dalbiti. It's the UK's first fully integrated forestry company. The company was named Youth Employer of the Month in February by Skills Development Scotland because of its commitment to growing talent. BSW employs 150 people across their site at Dalbiti and 30 apprentices, including Scotland's first female saw doctor, Katie, who I met on my visit there. In fact, BSW recently launched the UK's first saw doctor apprenticeship in partnership with Inverness College. It was really interesting to meet the apprentices and see um, the highly technical work that they perform in the mill. While I was there, I also spoke with Tony Lockie. Uh, he's the group learning and development manager and he's clearly passionate about helping his apprentices get the most out of their time at BSW. BSW group offers good opportunities, good jobs in rural areas, which can be challenging to find. So I was delighted to support the work that they are doing, recognize their good employment practices and the opportunities they are offering young people locally in the South Scotland region. Scottish Apprenticeship Week truly gives us the opportunity to promote the value of our young people and examine how we can support young folk from all walks of life to fulfill their potential. We know that the university isn't the optimal place for everyone to develop their specific skill sets and apprenticeships offer high quality work based learning that allows employees to learn on the job, reflect on their work and learn through experience. This approach not only helps young people to gain the qualifications and confidence they need to succeed, but allows businesses to develop the talent they need to grow. Over 90% of apprentices are still in employment in six months after completing their modern apprenticeship and 96% of employers say former apprentices are better equipped to do their job. 
To build on this progress, foundation apprenticeships, which has already been mentioned, have been developed to provide a work-based learning opportunity for senior secondary school pupils. Last in two years, pupils begin their foundation apprenticeship in S5 and spend time out of school at college or with a local employer. I'm delighted that this academic year, Dumfries and Galloway College secured the contract to deliver three foundation apprenticeships in engineering, business skills and social services, and children and young people. Over 10 years in government, the SNP has supported 7,000 modern apprenticeships in Dumfries and Galloway, an increase of almost 60% since 2007. So I'm pleased that there will be provision of foundation apprenticeships in the region. Presiding officer, I'd like to close by acknowledging the progress set out in developing the, youth, the Young Workforce Annual Report 2016-17. The programme's headline target to reduce youth unemployment by 40% by 2021 was met four years ahead of the target. While there is more to do, particularly to tackle gender imbalances, which has already been mentioned, and improve employment opportunities for those who are less abled, care experience and from ethnic minority backgrounds, we are well on the way to improving the life chances of Scotland's young people. Presiding officer, I am I'm also very happy to be an apprenticeship for an apprentice for the day, and perhaps I would do that at BSW, but just as a quick Google search, there are 26 opportunities um, in the South West that I would be happy to be employed in. Thank you. Does that mean you're going to do them all, Ms Harper? <laughs> Uh, Liam MacArthur, followed by Claire Hockey. Thank you very much, Deputy President. Obviously, can I too um, thank and congratulate uh, Jamie Halker Johnson on uh, bringing this debate and apologise for being briefly absent at the start uh, of it. Can I also uh, thank Skilled uh, Development Scotland uh, on their work in relation to apprenticeship, uh, apprenticeship Week? As we've heard through the debate and, and seen in the briefing, um, the level of MSP involvement they've managed to secure is highly impressive. In previous years, um, I have met apprentices at uh, Orkney Builders, uh, although every second apprentice I, I came across seemed to be a fellow member of the Sandy Parish Cup team. So this year, uh, I went instead to visit Fraser uh, Electrical in Finston, where I met Bruce Simpson and the team of apprentices there, much like Ruth McGuire. They were at various stages of their uh, apprenticeship, but all were very positive about the experience that they'd had, the skills that they were gaining through uh, the apprenticeship. I, I think if there was a concern, it would simply be that um, having a, a an afternoon in which to take forward the apprenticeship was often um, not necessarily long enough to enable um, um, sort of meaningful work to be undertaken and that may be something that needs to be uh, looked at. But as for Apprenticeship Week itself, I think it does successfully serve to help raise awareness about the importance of uh, work-based learning. Um, I, I think there is also a need uh, not just to expand the number but the range of those who see apprenticeships as a way of, um, uh, of helping them fulfil their potential. I think too often individuals could be pigeonholed uh, into apprenticeships uh, and others uh, down a more academic route. And I think as we've probably all seen uh, at a local level, that um, it, it is to misunderstand the value uh, of apprenticeships. Uh, looking at the statistics from SDS, it's encouraging to see uh, the increased number of modern apprenticeships in uh, the STEM frameworks, that this needs to be uh, improved yet further, uh, as well as the uh, proportion of female uh, participation. Uh, but following on the point made by Emma Harper, and having raised this uh, in, in the past, uh, while I was a member of the Education Committee indeed, I'm pleased to see the increased numbers of uh, modern apprenticeships drawn from traditionally underrepresented groups, whether that be uh, those with a disability, those with care experience, those from ethnic minority groups. Uh, I think, again, I think everybody would accept uh, there is still uh, a way to go there. But, <coughs> pardon me, that is indeed encouraging. Ian Gray is also right to remind us that we need to look beyond and behind the statistics. But nevertheless, the direction of travel seems to be uh, positive. Having set out this positive um, uh, I, I, this positive sort of prognosis for the apprenticeship programme. I do, however, want to just um, spend a couple of uh, minutes uh, before concluding on a concern that I've, uh, I've been raising with the, uh, with the Minister uh, previously. We had correspondence on this last year. And while CITB at a local level I know do excellent work, there's a real concern about the move away from uh, indentured uh, craft apprenticeships um, there does appear to have been a lack of uh, consultation, prior consultation, uh, before this decision was taken. There's a feeling that the needs of SME-sized uh, construction firms are not being uh, properly uh, reflected. 
the concern raised with me is that there is a, a, a dilution of the, the value and the attractiveness of apprenticeships. I know when the, the Minister wrote to me uh, last year, he, he was going to update me on the engagement with the UK Government uh, on the, uh, the review of the industry training boards, and perhaps he can do that in, in, in winding up. But I look forward to taking part in Apprentice for the uh, Day uh, uh, in due course. I'll maybe need to reassure my uh, constituents that it will be under strict supervision. Uh, I will not be allowed to rewire anybody's uh, house, despite my, uh, my president at Fraser's, uh, Fraser Electrical uh, earlier this month. But again, I congratulate uh, Jamie Humphrey Johnson on securing uh, a very worthwhile uh, debate. And uh, I hope the efforts of SDS through Apprenticeship Week and through Apprentice for a Day will encourage more people to see this work-based learning as a way of fulfilling their potential. Thank you. Uh, before I move on to Ms Hawkey, there's still a few members uh, wishing to speak. So I'm happy to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. And I would ask Jamie Halker johnson to move such a motion. I move. Thank you very much. Are members in agreement? No member having disagreed, I therefore extend this debate. Understanding Order Rule 8.14.3 and I call Claire Hawkey to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, first of all, I would also like to thank Jamie Halcrow Johnson for bringing today's debate to the Chamber. I think Mr Johnson was actually one of three MSPs to submit a motion for Scottish Apprenticeship Week 2018 and I'm grateful his was marked for members' business so it could be debated here today. I actually tabled one of the three motions, however, mine acted as an amendment to another in order to ensure that the Scottish Government, trade unions and professional bodies were all recognised for their roles in developing, supporting and sustaining of apprenticeships. Because without all partners working together, the range of apprenticeships in Scotland would not have been able to grow to the level that they've done over the last decade. Presiding officer, in my opinion, the aim of Scottish Apprentice Week is twofold. First of all, to highlight the enormous opportunities that they offer in allowing people to work and earn, all while studying for a recognised qualification. And the second, to celebrate businesses that value training their employees. For the last two years during Scottish Apprenticeship Week, I've been delighted to visit employers and apprentices in my own constituency. Last year, I had the opportunity to see Arnold Clark's Rutherglen branch, and it struck me during the time there that not only do the apprentices themselves see their experiences being overwhelmingly positive, the company do too. At the time of my visit last year, Barry Johnson, a service manager at the branch, said that the apprentices he works with are, and I quote, invaluable to the business. As we've heard from previous speakers, the theme of this year's Scottish Apprenticeship Week was Apprentices Are the Business, bringing recognition to the value work-based learning brings to employers across the country. And to mark this year's initiative, I visited MD Electrical Contractors Limited, which is based less than 200 yards from my constituency office in Rutherglen. As with the majority of apprenticeships across the country, MD Electrical Contractors have taken on a number of young adults and school leavers. And, there's unfor there, and unfortunately, there is a belief amongst some people that once school studies have ended that you must go into further education or attend college or university. But of course this is a myth, as many people go straight into the world of work and lead very successful lives, whilst others see apprenticeships as the avenue which suits them best. For those I met at MD Electrical Contractors, it was clear that to them that undertaking an apprenticeship was the best move for their chosen career path. President Officer, I would like to uh, raise a third and final employer from my constituency who have made great use of the apprenticeship scheme, and that's Clyde Gateway. Clyde Gateway is Scotland's largest and most ambitious regeneration programme. As a partnership between Glasgow City Council, South Lanarkshire Council and Scottish Enterprise, they're working to achieve unparalleled social, economic and physical change across Rutherglen and the east end of Glasgow. And they're a major source of employment locally. And from the figures kindly supplied to me by Nikki Spence and Jim Clark, they've directly created 58 apprenticeships, the vast majority of which are in construction. But another myth that we must collectively bust is that apprenticeships are for men. A number of Clyde Gateway's construction apprenticeship opportunities have gone to women, whilst they've recently awarded permanent contracts to three females who had gone through finance and administration modern apprenticeships. 
I'd like to thank Skills Development Scotland for their briefing paper, which showed that 60% of modern apprenticeship starts last year were male, whilst 40% were female. The increase in the proportion of female starts in Level 3 and above has risen each year since 2014-15. However, we mustn't rest on our laurels until apprenticeships provide the same opportunities to women as they do to men. President Officer, we've heard that MSPs are being encouraged to become an apprentice for the day at some point during this year, and I look forward to meeting that challenge too. Mm -hmm. Scottish Apprenticeship Week may have ended at, this, uh, at the start of March, but we mustn't forget to promote their benefits all year round. Well Call Rachel Hamilton to be followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to draw members' attention uh, to my register of interests as a business owner and as a modern apprenticeship employer. In fact, Deputy Presiding Officer, Skills Development Scotland got in touch with me when they knew that I was interested in going to Apprenticeship Week and getting involved, and they suggested that I went to my own business. But <laughs> anyway, thank you, Jamie, for bringing this um, debate to Parliament today. Um, I visited a business called Forbes Technology in Kelso, and they specialise in the production of industrial plastic tanks um, and virtually every field of industrial activity worldwide. Uh, the Forbes Apprenticeship Scheme sees the trainees undertake a vigorous programme that includes on-the-job training in state-of-the-art 3D computer-aided design technology, and apprenticeships can actually work towards a qualification in mechanical engineering. Unquestionably, um, apprentices learn invaluable skills over the course uh, of their time at Forbes, specialising in skills such as industrialised welding for fibreglass. I'd like to sing the praises of one of the apprenticeships who studied, uh, apprentices who studied a, a modern apprenticeship, but in order to do that, he had to spend time away from home. And this wasn't ideal, but he stuck with it, and three years down the line, he is developing his skills and has recently taken on a mortgage to buy a home in Kelso. And to think that modern apprenticeships encourage local people to live and work in their own communities is so important. And on the point of young people leaving home to study, sometimes this doesn't suit everybody, whether it's the transport issues, uh, whether it's the expense or the thought of leaving friends and family. And Skills Development Scotland are aware of this and have worked with a local training provider to deliver the theory element of the qualification closer uh, to Kelso to um, support these young people. The young person I met clearly demonstrated the value of apprenticeships and, and why this parliament must do as much as possible to get, promote it and get behind it. I want to also mention Borders College um, who are responding to sectorial needs and offer an array of modern apprenticeship courses from business to construction, engineering, health and social care. The Borders College plays a strong and important role in preparing young borderers for future life, where they can make a real difference to the economy socially and um, financially. I also want to use this debate uh, to bring the attention to the Minister that um, actually, um, when I visited Forbes Technology, every single person in that uh, building um, doing these uh, very technical uh, uh, engineering jobs are actually male. So um, I. I'd like to make a plea that you know, we can really put some effort into increasing the opportunities for young women in STEM subjects. Um, one of my focuses as a local MSB for the Borders is to make it an even better place for young people to live and work. And one of the ways I've done this is to, uh, recently was to host an event that invited schools and 150 school pupils from across the Borders highlighting the opportunities um, that we have uh, in different sectors, in particularly tourism and hospitality, but also in apprenticeships. Um, the sector um, across Scotland faces a skills gap, and apprenticeships can act as a bridge to close that gap and prepare not only the future workforce in the sector, but also actively help to evolve, to grow that sector. And the same skills shortages are felt in other sectors. One sector that's had recent attention is the tech sector. Again, Borders College has um, taken the initiative by offering a coding class to young teens. And this is a super encouraging move because we'll all soon face a world where coding becomes an essential skill. Um, but of course, to take full advantage, we must encourage apprenticeships in these industries. And there's so much opportunity in Scotland that we can explore. And to do that, we must help knock down those barriers of entry that stand in the way. The barriers of, barriers of entry that are felt in every industry, from engineering to tech to hospitality to tourism. Um, I say we promote apprenticeship schemes to knock down those apparent barriers and in turn ensure that Scotland retains its world-class status in areas that I've just mentioned. I've been championing young people since I became an MSP and I hope that the borders will become a better place to live and work for, for everyone. Um, and soon I look forward, like others, to take up the challenge of becoming um, an apprenticeship. And I've asked um, my team in my office uh, to look for something that is involved in maybe gin making. 
Um, but lastly, Deputy, Deputy Presiding Officer, may I wish all Please. apprenticeships and all those businesses who get involved with the training continued success. Called David Torrance, to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. I would also like to thank Jamie Halco Johnston for bringing this motion to Parliament today to recognise the importance of Scottish Apprenticeship Week. The programme has proven time and time again the benefits that it brings to individuals, businesses and the economy. It pulls together employers, apprentices, training providers, colleges, councils, schools and many other partners to create and celebrate a week of work-based learning that proves invaluable for young people across Scotland. Apprenticeships are a solution to balancing academic education with work-based learning. The Scottish Apprenticeship Programme matches young people from secondary school to graduate level with companies and businesses that give them a chance to explore fields they are interested in, meet with working professionals and ultimately form the skills and connections needed to advance in their careers. From an employer's perspective, these apprentices are also beneficial. They offer opportunities to find young talent, allowing employers to coordinate with schools, colleges and training providers to ensure that the apprentices have the ability to learn the skills they require. The success of the Scottish Apprenticeship Programme is evident by its ex expansion it has achieved over the last few years. The flagship programme, the Modern Apprenticeship, is on track to have over 27,000 young people engaged in an apprenticeship this year. The Foundation Apprenticeship, introduced four years ago, opened up its doors to secondary school pupils, bringing, them, bringing education closer to industry. And the Graduate Apprenticeship Programme, offered for the first time this year, increased the scope of young people involved to include those seeking a Diploma of Higher Education up to a master's degree, allowing them to attain a certification by an employment. The continued growth, both in participation and the scope of the Scottish Apprenticeship Programme, can be attributed to the value that both our young people and employers gain from it. During the Scottish Apprenticeship Week, I welcomed the opportunity to witness the value of this programme firsthand. My visit to G1 Reads in Kirkcaldy gave me a challenging start. I had to find out where it was, and its unassuming residential front caused me to be surprised when on entering the building, the first thing that greeted me was a World Pipe Band Championship trophy. I was impressed when I found that G1 Reads makes the very Reads and Chanters that were chosen by 2017 World Pipe Band Champions. I understand how G1 Reed has achieved such global success when I witnessed the meticulous work that their ded dedicated team creates. The Reeds Chanters and other Pipe Band products are, of, are produced by this company are of the highest standards. This small company employs eight people and two apprenticeships. It was inspiring to see how enthusiastic the two young apprentices were about the work they were doing and how dedicated they were to ensuring that the work was of the finest quality. G G1 Reads was definitely the most unusual workplace I have ever visited, but I left absolutely impressed and sure that the Scottish Apprenticeship Programme provides countless benefits to both apprentices and the employer. In conclusion, presiding officer, I would again like to thank Jamie Halco Johnston for bringing this motion for debate to the Chamber. The Scottish Apprenticeship Week is worth celebrating for it highlights the achievements that this programme has produced in a short time running. Personally, the Scottish Apprenticeship Week allowed me to discover a very talented company in my constituency and see exactly how and fully enthusiastic the apprentices are engaged in the business and the work that they do. Call Gordon MacDonald to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'll, I too thank Jamie Halcoe Johnson for securing this uh, debate. During this year's Scottish Apprenticeship Week, I was invited by the uh, Apex Hotel Group, who are headquartered in my constituency, to visit one of their hotels to meet some of the modern apprentices. I spent an enjoyable afternoon speaking to the young people about what the benefits were of undertaking a modern apprenticeship and their experience of working for the Apex Group. They highlighted the benefits as earning while you are learning, on-the-job training where you can develop skills through hands-on experience and support from the company to improve their qualifications. Apex Hotel's Modern Apprenticeship Scheme was launched back in 2012 by the then Minister for Youth Employment, Angela Constance, to set young people up for a career in hospitality. The programme gives apprentices the opportunity to learn skills and acquire knowledge in many different areas from food and beverage to front office, from housekeeping to catering. The family-owned hotel group aimed to make working as a modern apprentice a positive, educational and tailored experience, providing the knowledge, skill set and confidence to set the apprentices on the right track for a fulfilling and rewarding career within the hospitality, leisure and tourism sector. 
Since my visit at the beginning of the month when Apex Hotels had 43 apprentices, they have taken on an additional 11 young people, taking their current number of apprentices to 54. Having seen the benefits of their approach to the business, the Apex Hotel Group then became one of the five founding members of the Scottish Apprenticeship and Hospitality Programme, a programme that was created in 2014 along with the Glen Eagles Hotel, Blyswood Square Hotel, Cameron House Hotel and the Torridon Hotel. There are now 14 hotels in Scotland that are delivering this programme. This two-year course with an option of a specialised third year is a world-class industry-led hospitality programme aimed at 17 to 24 year olds and allows young people to work on real projects with experienced colleagues and reflect and develop their work through practice. The apprenticeship was created to attract the best young people in Scotland to consider hospitality as a rewarding career opportunity at a time where because of the growth of leisure travel and tourism over the past decade, we are seeing an inevitable global expansion of the hospitality and tourism industries. What helps to make this programme unique is the opportunity to participate in learning journeys and master classes designed and delivered by top industry professionals. The benefits of an apprenticeship to young people have been clearly illustrated through this debate. However, as the theme of this year's Scottish Apprenticeship Week is business, I wanted to finish by mentioning why Apex Hotel Group make this investment in young people and their career development. They have mentioned two things to me. One, it gives them the chance to grow their own talent because they deliver the training, they know their, apprenticeships, their apprentices best and can provide them with the support and mentoring that's right for the individual, allowing them to succeed in the company's environment. Secondly, this mentoring, coaching and confidence building makes the Apex Hotel Group an attractive employer somewhere where people want to work, and this plays an important part in their staff retention. Presiding officer, apprenticeships in Scotland have come a long way, and the benefits they bring are well recognised. They provide the opportunities that our young people need and the expertise that our industries require. As Scotland builds a skilled workforce it needs for the future, it's clear to me that apprenticeships will play a significant role in that. The last of the open debate contributions is Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer, and I too would like to thank uh, Jamie Halford Johnson for bringing this very important issue to the Chamber. Yesterday was a timely reminder of the importance of modern apprentices in developing our young workforce when TOM in Airdrie announced its closure with hundreds of jobs to be lost. As I raised today at First Minister's questions, and although not directly in my constituency, it is, is indeed very near, and I know for a fact that many of the jobs at risk will be from Coatbridge, and I welcome the First Minister's response and commitment to that. As many of you may remember, I brought a similar motion to debate last year in anticipation of Scottish Apprenticeship Week, an event that I have now had the honour of participating in the second year running. Scottish Apprenticeship Week 2018 had a successful run the week of the March the 5th, with 99 organised visits by MSPs and ministers from all over Scot Scotland meeting with Foundation, Modern and Graduate Apprentices. I personally had the pleasure of meeting with a few modern apprentices at the Gartkosh based Lockview Nursery, in which the training they get and work they do really exemplify the theme for this year, which was, as Gordon MacDonald said, apprenticeships are the business. Recognising the value such uh, apprentices bring to employers across the nation, and this programme is such an extraordinary opportunity for our young people to take advantage of the paid work-based learning process of an apprenticeship, ultimately making them attractive to employers and more likely to move into employment. The nursery itself, presiding officer, is doing an outstanding job in equipping future childcare providers with both qualifications for the specific role and the transferable skills across the sector. And this work, of course, is particularly necessary right now as the Scottish Government's commitment to increasing early learning and childcare free entitlement is scheduled to go from 600 hours to 1,440 hours by 2020. And this will undoubtedly create a greater demand for those trained in childcare and thus this apprenticeship programme not only furthers the careers of young people, but it can be a crucial component of answering the changing demands of our economy. And as I said earlier, this is not my first year witnessing the great work of the apprenticeship programme. I also had the chance to visit Monkless Hospital last year, where I spoke with Graham apprentices about their programme and training methods. But both were great experiences, and I have to say I heard from very enthusiastic young people on both occasions. 
And presiding officer, staying predictable for you and sticking with the constituency, I recently welcomed the Minister, uh, Jamie Hepburn, to steps for his visit to Solutions Driven Recruitment, a firm involving recruitment challenges for employers. There he heard about the good work the firm has accomplished in their 20-year history and celebrated both their platinum cer certification by investors and people and their gold award in good practice for investors and young people, both of which speak to the SDR's commitment to the recruitment, training and retention of young people in the workforce. And I can confirm, as other members have taken the chance to do, that I will take part in the SDS's uh, Apprenticeship for a Day programme in my constituency over the coming months, not yet determined where that will be. In conclusion, presiding officer, apprenticeships are a vital part of, the, of supporting our young people into work, and the extra investment of focus over the past decade has tran transformed apprenticeships across the board. Countries with well-developed vocational learning systems and significant employer engagement have the lowest levels of youth unemployment. So by investing in modern apprenticeships, we are paving a better future for all of our children. Apprenticeships are particularly beneficial to those who may feel that college or university isn't the best, way, isn't the best fit for them. Instead of penalising such young adults, apprenticeships offer them an equally rewarding and successful path into the world of employment. Apprenticeships are, of course, a vital part of building a stronger Scotland and ensuring that we have a talented, multi-skilled workforce that will help build our economy. It is in all of our interest to ensure that modern apprenticeships are easily and equally accessible to all Scotland's young people, and we develop the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. Presiding officer. I now call Jamie Hepburn to respond to the debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, President Officer. And can I uh, join with others uh, in thanking Jamie Halker Johnson for uh, bringing uh, the debate to the Chamber? Can also thank uh, those members who have uh, taken the time to contribute. Uh, we have had a large uh, number of contributions uh, this afternoon, President Officer, which uh, I very much welcome. I think it reflects uh, the Chamber's cross party interest in this uh, subject matter, which is very welcome. Let me join with uh, Mr Halcrow Johnson uh, in thanking Skills Development Scotland for the work uh, they uh, undertake year round uh, in terms of apprenticeships but in particular in relation to Scottish Apprenticeship Week we should also place on record our thanks to uh, training providers and colleges for uh, the uh, training they put in place. Uh, also uh, I think it's always very important to remember to thank uh, employers as well because we must remember that every uh, apprentice is uh, an employee and we rely on employers to take uh, them on. Uh, so without uh, their commitment, uh, it would not be uh, possible to welcome the great expansion in the number of uh, apprentices uh, we have seen. So we must recognise uh, the commitment uh, they make, including, uh, of course, because we need to ensure uh, employer input into the design of uh, our apprenticeship system, uh, the Scottish Apprenticeship Advisory Board, which is facilitated through Skills Development Scotland, which contains many representatives of uh, industry and other interested parties uh, in informing uh, our, uh, uh, our system. Uh, can I, in that regard, join uh, Mr Burnett in uh, calling on more employers to get uh, involved and take part in taking on uh, apprentices? Uh, I would uh, offer some uh, moderate words of caution to what uh, he uh, mentioned. Uh, in the first instance, we probably shouldn't be talking about tradesmen, we should be talking about tradespeople, because we don't want to reinforce uh, gender stereotypes, which is a significant challenge for us in apprenticeships. Uh, but also, uh, 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 just as uh, genuinely, we probably should uh, avoid, certainly we want uh, those involved in the trades to be taking on more apprentices, but we shouldn't be talking about them in exclusion, because I think as we've heard today, um, our apprenticeship offering goes much wider than uh, just uh, the trades. And, and talking about that in particular, that in itself uh, sometimes reinforces uh, misperceptions and misconceptions about what uh, apprenticeships uh, are all uh, about. Uh, in relation to uh, Scottish Apprenticeship Week uh, itself, um, I have to uh, say, President Officer, given uh, that we had the full blast of winter uh, the week uh, before its full wrath uh, unleashed across Scotland, that I was a, a little apprehensive about the possible impact we might have seen on uh, the number of scheduled events uh, and visits. Uh, that, in that regard, I have to say, um, Mr Gray actually got his was it timed uh, absolutely correctly because he must have been one of the few people who managed to source a supply of milk uh, that uh, particular uh, week. So his was very convenient. But despite the, the challenges the weather uh, um, brought us, uh, thanks to the resilience and commitment of everyone involved, including uh, those uh, in uh, this chamber and other members who took part, there was a minimal impact. Uh, we've had uh, a number of people refer to the fact that there were uh, 99 
uh, uh, visits by uh, MSPs uh, the, uh, over uh, the week. Uh, people have obviously drawn that from the SDS briefing. I suppose I have somewhat of an advantage in that I engage with Skills Women Scotland probably a bit more regularly than folk. Uh, that number has actually been revised upwards. Uh, we actually had 103 uh, in total over the course of the week with 25 uh, ministerial engagements, uh, which in itself, uh, 103 visits was up from 90 the year before making the eighth Scottish Apprenticeship uh, Week, one of the biggest and best uh, yet. And that for me is very important because we have uh, Tom Arthur, Ruth Maguire and others have correctly talked about the need for us to ensure better parity of esteem uh, between uh, vocational education and apprenticeships in particular uh, and other uh, um, uh, forms of, of post-school uh, destination. And that is a challenge I take very seriously uh, indeed. Uh, I think we have had this challenge historically. That's why I, I uh, mentioned the, uh, as being cautious about talking about just the trades uh, in isolation. And we are trying to invest uh, time and effort in, in improving uh, in that parity of esteem through uh, careers advice and through our uh, uh, vocational offer in the school environment. I understand, uh, and uh, I think it was Mr Halcorn Johnson who was offering some words of, of caution about the, the, uh, the pace in relation to foundation apprenticeships. I think if we looked at it reasonably though. If we looked at two years ago, we had uh, just around 340 odd uh, foundation apprenticeships starting uh, that year. Uh, this ye uh, year, uh, we saw uh, around 1,200 starting. Next year, we're seeing 2,600 and the year after our commitment is 5,000. That's pretty significant growth uh, in a short period of time and our ambitions uh, go further uh, still. And embedding that in uh, the school environment was of course opening uh, up uh, the minds of young people uh, and indeed uh, teachers and parents because that's critical as well presiding officer to understanding the apprenticeship offer um, uh, 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 and uh, whilst young people are still uh, at school. I won't go over everyone's uh, visits uh, over the course of the week. It's uh, very heartening to hear uh, that there was a, a range of different visits and everyone found it a, an enjoyable and rewarding experience. That's certainly what I uh, found uh, in the visits I undertook. I went to see uh, Strathley Partnership for uh, uh, Transport, uh, their Broom Loan uh, Depot for the Glasgow Subway. Uh, I was very delighted to see they're taking on uh, their first batch of apprentices for, for some considerable time, uh, critically including uh, the provision of apprenticeship opportunities for some people who had actually worked for them uh, for a long period of time, getting the chance to upskill uh, some uh, guys in their, their early 30s who worked for them for about 12 years, getting the opportunity of uh, an apprenticeship uh, 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 did happen to be uh, guys uh, in this uh, case, of course. Uh, that's another reminder we need to, to broaden out those participating. I also went to see uh, a meet with uh, over 40 uh, apprentices in the hospitality sector, including, and I should mention her, uh, Rosie Wilkins, who works at the Torridon Hotel, who was uh, the Scottish Apprentice of the Year uh, in uh, 2017. I met with uh, over 40 uh, apprentices working in the hospitality sector. Mr Macdonald will be delighted to the Apex Group were uh, represented. And that's an important uh, example of a, a sector that's traditionally been viewed as somewhat transient and not a long-term career. And the fact that there are apprenticeships in there uh, is very welcome because it shows you can build a career. Uh, let me just uh, sum up. There were a, a couple of uh, issues raised uh, around the equalities agenda. Uh, this is something we take very seriously indeed. Uh, Skills Development Scotland is working to its equalities action plan. We have seen some improvements. We must see uh, more will continue to work to that. In relation to the uh, issues around, about the apprenticeship levy that Mr Halcrow Johnson uh, mentioned, I will very happily say we're taking a different approach from that we see in England, uh, because what we have seen uh, over the first three quarters of this year is our performance in terms of the number of starts. 70% of the target we set for the year uh, had started by the first three quarters, the same as at the uh, same point in 2016-17, whilst in England, uh, in the first two quarters since the introduction of the apprenticeship levy, in the first quarter we saw a 59.3% reduction in number of apprentices in the same period from the year before, and in the second quarter thereafter, 26% reduction. So, and that's very much on the basis of us having, I would say, a high quality often because we're not following what's been done in England, setting, I, I believe, a too ambitious a target in terms of the raw numbers, which has led to concerns about a diminution in quality. That's not what we're doing here. We have a high quality product. I think that's what we all want to see. That's what Scottish Apprenticeship Week should remind us about. I'm very much welcome the fact that we've had the chance to debate that this afternoon. That concludes the debate and this meeting is suspended until 2.30pm. <laughs>